This is better times than it was in 2008. Now, I know, I know that I'm always putting myself out there and I'm always showing previous documents and W-2s or receipts and brokerage accounts and stuff like that. But I have to be honest. And the reason that I have to be honest is because you have to start seeing what it really looks like in real life as far as what it takes in order to be successful. I'm not telling you anything that I have not lived through, that I have not done. I'm not giving you a theory. I'm telling you what being 20 years married looks like. This is what being laid off. This is what it takes. This is what it looks like from being laid off and making about $120,000 a year to this. Giving directions to your chick according to what it is that she, she, she's supposed to do because you got to go to work and you need her. She about to go to church. And so because she was going to church on a Wednesday night service and I still had to stay out and work, I had to send her with the directions. Hey, this is what you're going to do with the money. Take this. I transferred this amount of money to this. This is this. Do this, do that and do that because we need the blessings and take this twenty dollars for now because it's going to be more to come in the future and it's going to be blessings. It's going to be blessings on blessings on blessings rolling over. So when you say that you want a six figure man, you want a rich man, you want all of that. I'm curious because at that time I was 27 years old. Fellas, hear what I'm saying. Ladies, hear what I'm saying. Most men don't even start to get their lives together and really start to come into their greatness until they start to approach their 30s. I had my daughter when I was 26 years old in 2008. 27 years old. I was 27 years old trying to figure that shit out. 27 years old trying to figure it out. She showed me that the other day and I almost threw that junk away. I didn't even want to see it because I just remember what it was that I was going through in order to make sure that I got to where I needed to get to. And I made a declaration to God, to my family, to my daughter that they would never, ever, and that they would ever, ever see poverty and that I was going to get there. And it didn't matter if I had to work day or night. And people ask me, Anton, where do you get your work ethic from? Anton can't keep up this level of pace. Anton can't do this. What you tell me? I dare you to tell me what I can't do. I know where I came from. That thing that I did and that I went through at that time, it molded me into becoming the man that I am today. There was lessons. And I showed myself to be faithful and worthy and a good steward of my money and to learn lessons and to take care of business and to take care of the people that was around me. And to rededicate myself and also no matter how little or how much I made to always do volunteer work. Even back then in 2009, I was doing volunteer work. Once I wasn't doing volunteer work as a part of the church. I was doing volunteer work as an individual. My passion project was homelessness. I was going out and feeding people. I was volunteering at different churches and different rescue missions. And we was going out and really, really helping people and standing in line with them and praying for them and being, being there for them. You think that I molded my ability to be able to communicate on a live stream on a live stream? I molded my ability to be able to communicate in real life. Out there with the people. With them. Going through it with them. In the cold. Helping to build the church from scratch, from the ground up. We learned everything. Plumbing, electrical. We painted. We hung drywall. We was literally on top of the roof. Making sure that we fix any leaks. I was faithful, dedicated, unwavering. I've always been the same way. I was very steadfast in what my thoughts were. I never wavered. All while going to school, going to community college. And then in the meantime, telling her, hey, you know we're not always going to be in this situation, right? You know, listen, this is, what I, this is what I was telling her. You know we're not always going to be in this situation, right? You know we're going to get rich, rich, right? You know we're we not ever going to depend on no bank. We're not ever going to depend on no financing. We're going to have everything that our hearts desires. We're going to fly. When I fly Delta One, it's because I was flying one Delta. 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? When I go and take that private flight, is because I was I I went through it. You can't tell me not to live it up because I earned it. When I work my ass off, is because I conditioned myself to do so. And when you see the fact that she's gonna be held down for the rest of the, for her life, and when I say that I would never let her feet hit the ground, is because people around me and there are certain ones, including the person that I lay next to every day, that was dedicated and admired with me. And when I came home and my feet was fucking hurting and burning because I had two different jobs at the same time, they was rubbing my feet and saying, listen, you got this. You got this. You got this. And she was like, and, and I'm going to tell you, she said, yo, because we had made a declaration and we said, listen, when we had our, we didn't know that the fucking recession was going to come and I was going to get laid off from the steel mill. I was working 16 hours a day, seven days a week. We didn't know I was making $120,000 a year and we didn't know that that was going to come. And so when I lost my job and I couldn't find another job or anything like that, and I had to move back into my parents' basement and everything. And I would say, yo, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. And in one day, because we had made the decision that when she had my daughter, at the very least until my daughter was old enough to go to school full time, that she was going to be a stay at home mother. We had made the declaration that when my daughter was born, until she was old enough to go to school full-time, that she was going to be a full-time mother. Now, I made that promise, and I made that declaration, and so when it hit us, I'm being, listen, your threshold for pain. When it hit us, I held true to that. And she said one day, she said, listen, we can get her grandmother to watch her, and I can go and get a job to help. She didn't say, no crazy stuff. She said, we can get her grandmother, we can get our, my mom to watch her or your mom to watch her, and I can go and get a job so we can get there faster. And that pissed me off. And it didn't piss me off because she was being so nice. I wasn't pissed at her. I was pissed. It motivated me. And it put a fire up under me. And I was like, you know what? It's really on now. Is really on now. Ain't nothing and nobody can stop me because I'll be damned if you if I let you go back on the promise that I made as far as the fact that you wasn't going to be doing none of this shit until my daughter was going to be able to go to school full time. And I said, listen, from this day forward, I will not sleep. I will not rest my head until I know for a fact that this is the thing that we doing and we trending in the right direction. And we are 100 percent set for the rest of our life. And from that day till now, I developed a work ethic that's unmatched. And I don't think that anybody, anybody, listen, you may not like the way that I talk. You may not like the way that I look. You may not like what it is that I stand for. You may not even like the fact that I'm saved, sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. But the one thing that you will respect is my work ethic. Nobody can take that away from me and my love of God. You may not even like the fact that I cuss. May not even like the, the fact that I cuss, but you cannot take away my work ethic. And I said, all right, we're going to move differently. What I'm trying to convey to you guys, and I'm about to drop the link in the chat, is that everything that you think that you're going through, it's already been done. It's nothing new under the sun. Stick around. Go home. Ain't nothing on the other side of that fence. Make sure you hold down the person that's next to you. And then get through it. And it's always going to be a light at the end of the tunnel. Whatever it is that you're going through right now is just an opportunity for you to learn a lesson. Your threshold for being able to endure through it is going to be the determining factor for whether or not you're successfully married. Because it's always going to be nice on the other side. Anybody can be in a great situation or a great relationship when everything is going well and everybody making money and everybody getting to the bag. But I've seen a lot of relationships dissolve and people not like themselves when people was getting laid off and people had to stay home and that COVID money started running out and wasn't no more stimulus checks and that rent was due and the rent moratorium was ended, everything changed, didn't it? 